due to the fact that uh, he's an example of very high quality graphic design, which is actually uh, obtained in the city in which we all live. The interesting part of FM is that they uh, work in uh, an heterogeneous manner in different fields, and you will see some uh, exhibition design and publishing design and uh, in various other fields, and they've also written books regarding these various fields. And since we have the convention that they represent an example of a very interesting approach of design and communication, uh, where we always say that in Italy we do not have the possibility of obtaining quality design, this is the true proof that there is a great quality. If there is a correct exchange between a studio of people who really believe and have a passion and some clients who really want to listen to what they have to say, well, obviously we expect a lot of very sincere and very honest way of talking about all the various things. There will be time at the end of this conference to ask questions, and uh, Sergio will be available to uh, uh, say almost everything, let's say, of uh, how everything uh, went in his career. This is the first of a series, and the 4th of May, there is another meeting with Nicola Burka of OnLab, uh, a studio which is located between Switzerland and Germany. If you're all interested, you are invited to participate. I've spoken uh, way too much. Now I leave the word to Sergio. Thank you very much for having come here with us. To... Hi, can you all hear me? I don't hear myself, but uh, um, can you all hear? Can you all hear? Yes, no? Um, they can we have an answer? Can you all hear? Okay. I'm not so used to uh, using a microphone like in Sanremo, but I will try my best. Uh, how Silvia was saying, well, the maximum expert of uh, graphic design in Italy. Uh, well, my studio um, has this, uh, this uh, reputation of uh, being heterogeneous. Well, it is a studio, in fact, which is heterogeneous in terms of education and training and backgrounds. It was not founded by myself, but the original sin originates in its uh, founding because it was founded by me and my partner. Uh, I love her very much, dearly, but she does not have my same way of designing. Actually, very frequently it's in, in this uh, uh, language and way of speaking that our studio really works. Well, in the year 2000, uh, uh, excuse me, in 1996, uh, our studio was founded and therefore it's 15 years old. In the year 2000, uh, a third partner joined the team. Uh, and to be even more happy, also the third partner had a vision and a uh, education which was totally different. Um, this thing has, uh, according to my opinion, been the mechanism which has been an emancipation, which was like a generational emancipation compared to the uh, studios that were our actual models. Uh, as Italian, but as Europeans, why, why, why did you do this? Okay, well, just for a while, please, can I have the lights on? Okay, okay, we all have to have lights off. Well, usually the people who have... Uh, well, I was saying, uh, this... And why uh, this has become a mechanism uh, of limit, which actually was a true resource for us. Well, we have realized that the personal estate and customized vision 
and a bit formalistic way uh, of the people who were our reference points or masters or teachers well, was becoming in the actual profession of the graphics, not in the language of the graphics, but in the true profession. It was becoming like a cage, which was embarrassing. It was a trap. Um, it was creating some links that were very dangerous with other disciplines like art, illustrations, and I don't know what other, but well, rather, this way of looking at things in a different way, well, in our studio, has become a true resource. And why do I say this? Because our projects are very different, very different one from the other, very different uh, uh, the typologies of clients that we deal with. We do not work for uh, uh, publishers or uh, the industry of furnishing uh, production or for a specific field, and we don't even work on a media. So it's not that we only do websites, no. Uh, we do some projects uh, which are frequently transversal, especially in, in terms of media and transversal, also our activity in the studio in terms of typologies. We work for clients which do products um, which cost so much that none of us could actually afford buying and for Le Roi Merlin. And therefore, we have um, in this heterogeneous job with the years we've seen a true resource. Well, let me just turn this up. Power. This is the studio. Well, sometimes there's more people in it and it's more populated, but well, this way of conceiving the work of graphic design, so so plural has been and has been emphasized by all the various designers that work in our studio. Uh, they are all designers. Uh, um, according to any kind of point of view. They are not people who simply execute projects me, Barbara, or Cristiano have eventually put on. They are people who designed with us. Sometimes the projects, we start them up with a specific kind of idea dealt with a series of other people working with us. But um, all these people have an active role and uh, they have helped them this plurality of views. This picture, there is Barbara Forney here, um, and Cristiano Bottino, he's my partner. This picture, well, it's the entire studio, almost the complete, except for the photographer who is uh, out of the picture, obviously, in like a countryside uh, image. We're in ten. Toto. I have uh, brought some projects all very different in terms of typology. This is the first project that I brought in, which uh, was um, done two years ago. We have done the graphics for the edition of the Design Museum of uh, the Triennale which has a very particular project. I don't know if you all know how it actually works. Well, the project, according to my opinion, is very genial, or it's not banal at all. Well, the design museum, which has basically fit in, no one has really wanted to do this, no one wanted to be the artistic director of this museum, Satsas was asked to do this, and he refused. Um, 
Rather, Branzi, who is the scientific curator of the museum, had this idea. The fact of every two years giving putting a designer in charge that in a very personal way, with his own view and point of view, he would uh, narrate the story of Italian design, but viewed with his own eye. Uh, well, three editions or four, three, three, excuse me, and uh, we have done the graphics for the second edition. The first was done by Rota, and it was a project which was uh, a very Italo Rota, and I'm sure you all know him, uh, well, very lyric. The second project, rather, has been uh, given in terms of uh, display to Antonio Citerio, who called us for what concerns the graphics. Well, the project of Citerio was entitled Serie Fuori Serie, Series Out of Series. Uh, it was a project that, in terms of concept, it was very interesting, very didascalic. It had to be an idea that had to be categorized for systems of production, therefore a lamp or eventually a toothbrush could eventually be all put in the same area because they were thermoformed, thermocasted. And therefore, the series and the out of series um, were analyzed as industrial products. And the entire museum had uh, a great need of the captions and uh, a didascalic effect. And this is usually a, a problem. Rather, this became the true concept of this exhibition. It was like a monument to captions. And in fact, the entire display was variated. All the captions for every small little object was super descriptive. And at the real beginning, we had to write how many pieces every product was produced in, and how many pieces with what kind of material, any kind of material. And we had to create some very complex diagrams to speak about the productive process. Well, then obviously the, the project was redimensioned, but basically this idea of uh, making captions and writing like a book that would divulgate the entire product design. When in uh, Italy we talk about design, graphics is never present, but unfortunately this is how it is. This was a very big diagram which we have designed, which is a map of the exhibition itself. The uh, plan of the design museum is like a, a horse hook, and you can actually see this going around on clockwise or anti-clockwise. And at the real beginning, you had this map, which was very complex, in which there were uh, identified the various different areas, experimentation, series, big series, small series, or how you can all see, well, these have some colors which are pertinent to the various areas, but there are shaded, right? Because something cannot be uh, a specific category in a linear manner. There is a shade that blends one into the other. Therefore, the visitor can go and see the exact products. Every single product is reproduced and uh, therefore specified in this map. If you want to look for a product, it's exactly present in this map. We have created some pictograms to uh, narrate about some icons of what is um, what are actually the representative icons of Italian design, like the Apic card. And the entire the project of Cinterio was based on the use of these sheets. Well, they're a basic monument to the folded 
sheet of paper or a page of a book. It's like some pages of a book on which um, all the various descriptive texts are placed. Um, therefore, these pages, these great panels, are made in a material which is super expensive. It's Korean, which has a, a, a characteristic which is very similar to marble. It's white, but it's slightly translucent. It can be retroilluminated, and therefore all those white writing that you see on these are series simply grinded and retro-illuminated by the windows with natural light. This is a first reading from far out. Two, in the second reading, there is a critical text in two languages, and then there are captions on every single project. Well, the system and the method is very complex. The panels have an aluminum structure behind, but the effect is this, the final effect. Well, this, for example, is interesting because we have designed these panels all white exactly as if this was a book. There's a true graphic cage. Uh, there is a setting, which is a publishing setting. Rather, it's uh, an exhibition, therefore it's not a published book. Um, and then the smaller captions uh, look like Korean, uh, like soap, and they are all printed on the Korean itself. These are some, they look like some uh, rest in peace uh, stones, uh, two kilos each. So this, this catalog is exactly conceived with the same uh, meaning, the same sense, the captions are very relevant and they have a fundamental role. And this finishes like this. Well, this is another project, but what has been interesting in the project we have done at the Design Museum has been this, this um, like disassembling all the values. We have designed a book which was exposed and displayed in an exhibition divided into a space, as if we disassembled a book in order to narrate and talk about a project. This rather is a small little project. We have done an entomological research of insects, just to do a poster. Well, this uh, were different characters. Well, every insect represents one unique character. A typographical uh, character. The first one is done with the Dean, and we have simply produced this uh, promotional poster for our studio. Well, this is a, a project which is very relevant, it's really abundant. We've done this for a tailor, an Italian tailor, a very high quality, very, very uh, expensive and uh, great awareness in terms of brand. Well, for them, we're still uh, doing a bit of everything. Um, the characteristics of this 
this tailor is that everything which is produced by them is handmade. And in fact, uh, I don't know, a suit, a Brioni suit has some incredible cost. It's very expensive and a lot is customized. Um, and I don't know, 007, James Bond was dressed by Brioni, just to tell you um, what kind of style. What we have done since the real beginning is a sort of repositioning of the Brioni brand. Uh, well, it had a connotation which was, uh, how can we say, a bit funny, a bit old. Uh, how can we say a bit um, out of the normal standards of fashion brands um, where you need in some way um, be contemporary and updated see for example this was a super lucky thing and Obama was just talking and this is true he was just talking in a, at a, a conference in a like it was the Yankee Stadium and wind blew his his tie and they took a picture and it said Brioni on it. Well, can you believe it? No president of the United States can actually dress with uh, an outfit where they actually show a label, right? So uh, this is a law, right? This cannot be, this is unconceivable. But in fact, this image right here, we managed to place it on the website, but uh, this is obviously an advertising and this could not be done. But we, we should have done an advertising with this. We sent a fax to Obama to ask him, but uh, it was a no-no, but anyway. Um, just uh, Clark Gable to what's the other guy's name there? No, the one of the Pink Panthers, Peter Sellers, will trust the Brioni with the, the, that, oh my God, incredible 70s style fur coat. What we have actually done is by having a series of different graphic elements, visual elements that would belong to this world and in order to play with these in a constructive manner. The first thing, well, this wasn't the color before, but uh, uh, we have done a, a research and a work on their like beige color, which was like, I don't know, uh, an egg omelet. And we have proposed the more sophisticated color. We've done a lot of different trials regarding fabrics and so on, but uh, we have also created some tables where we were speaking about the percentage and the quantity that in the corporate identity, we intended the quantity of objects of that color that we wanted to use. This was one of those uh, uh, forms that we prepared for them. These all appear the same color here, but there are uh, completely different colors of the corporate identity. And then we found this font designed by Peter Milak, um, which, uh, according to many of us, is one of the best uh, font designer. And uh, um, he is uh, a, this is a font which is a bit particular. It's like a Bodonian, very uh, contemporary, but uh, in some way, it really looks like Brioni. It has a drawing which is very, very accurate, traditional, but especially in the small caps, it, it has a taste which is very modern, very contemporary. Uh, well, this is a um, weave, which is, they call it fly, and in Brioni they use this kind of weave in order to attach the linings to jackets. Well, we went into the Brioni uh, production plant. There is no machinery, no noise. People are cutting with scissors. Women are sewing, that's it, and they sew by hand or with some sewing machines which are super silent and they're the ones that take
sailors use, and this specific stitch has a copyright attribute, and that is definitely part of their corporate identity. And the cuts of all their paper models and their patterns were the first thing we've seen, because all over the place we saw all these um, uh, transversal cuts, the fact that it's orthogonal cut, it does not exist. It's always a bias cut. These are the product forms, the technicals of their and we have seen and started working for them, and uh, for example, their website, which is online, and you can see it. Well, it does not have any orthogonal movements. It all moves according to these bias cuts, which are very similar to the cuts of the tailoring in that world, in that way of representing a brioni. The only sport that they can actually represent is polo, because all the others are. And then we have worked uh, on any kind of material that they uh, use. Obviously, very expensive material, very particular. This is uh, a paper which has the same texture of wood. Hello? These are invitations, or we have done 150 different objects. I just brought in a series uh, just for you to understand. Something which I believe is interesting is how, well, this, we're talking about a tailor, okay? It is not a brand which sees in graphic design a, a mechanism or a way of asserting their way of conceiving the product or eventually a way of uh, speaking about their fashion and their style. There are people who are used to working and just doing. And actually, it's, it's not casino. Okay? And uh, um, this is also the reason why I brought in this work. Well, here are many different examples of uh, uh, different projects. Well, and in fact, the stitching is part of the corporate identity. And uh, obviously, there are various books, different packagings. We have designed a bit everything. <laughs> This is another project, a small project. We've done just a small little booklet um, on uh, a free theme, basically, for Corraini, which is a very famous editor publisher. It was the same publisher of Munari. They do these 16th, this is how they're called. It means it's 16 pages of an A5 format, which are um, just uh, dedicated and offered to a graphic studio or to a graphic designer, giving him or the studio the possibility of doing basically what he wants. And since we are three partners, how we said, and we do not have one unique way of seeing things, well, the thing that um, like linked us was the city, the city in which our studio is located, and therefore we thought to do something regarding them, on, and uh, uh, with time, piece by piece, it uh, became, uh, according to me, I'm probably the most Milanese among the three partners, but uh, it was a mechanism of, um, I don't know, it's like an emotional demonstration of the love I feel for my city, which obviously not many people love. Uh, um, Milanese especially do not love their city, and therefore we've done this sort of joke where a femme becomes Filafelia Milanese, 
And these are the booklets, and uh, we have done some collections of stamps. Philatelia is a production of stamps, right? And obviously on Milan, but not Milan intended as uh, the, the Last Supper or eventually Sant'Ambrogio. But the things we like about Milan on the cover page, we've placed the, the fog of Milan, Milan's fog with obviously all the impediments of the visibility and uh, musicians uh, Cristino Donà, Elio Lestaretese, PFM, Yanachi and Gaber all musicians the architecture, the architecture we appreciate, not necessarily the most iconic or important but there are some things like uh, that we like a lot to cartoon strips for comics. Well, we haven't uh, made any reference to graphic design or therefore Enzo Mari Castiglioni uh, what's the one who how do you call it? The one of the, the Ecclisse Magistretti and Mari. And uh, all the artists that we appreciate the most Manzoni, Fontana, and Veronesi. <coughs> all the industries. The things to drink and eat. And each of these uh, uh, miniatures was obviously a small little project. And therefore, it was very small in terms of dimension, but it, it took us a lot of time and a lot of effort because to do something for yourself, it's always a very hard work. This, obviously, I showed you a, like a close-up because Ettore Sozzas was uh, our reference point, especially for me, for Barbara and I, we were working there. This is another project, very particular, that we've done, a small uh, uh, project for Artlinea, they do uh, basically design kitchen, we haven't done this uh, logo, uh, the, the design kitchens. Uh, pretty famous, uh, they are from Vicenza. For them, we have uh, design catalog. It all started from uh, a project which started from their, uh, their stand at the Salone last year in Milan at the Salone del Mobile. We have selected some elements of the kitchen. I pressed it twice, sorry. Um, well, uh, we started composing these, putting these together. And we started uh, uh, creating some textures, some different shapes, which then became, uh, well, they fell in love with this, basically. We like this pretty much, but they like it more. And these became some very important elements for their corporate identity. And we have used these in various occasions. These are panels which are six meters tall, retro illuminated, uh, and the entire uh, stand was done in this way. And here the luminous walls always had these textures. Obviously, this became part of the catalog. These are the renderings uh, because as soon as uh, uh, it was uh, printed, we didn't photograph it. But the textures became some, basically some uh, pages in between the various parts of the book and the chapters and uh, a typical product catalog.
Questo è un progetto piccolino, Raccoglieva progetti, progetti di designers, artisti, brands projects and many of those probably would uh, never actually work. Um, and therefore, we uh, collected all the projects that uh, we received, and they were all displayed in this exhibition. And we had to do some small little drawings with the big uh, pen, which would represent them. So the entire communication was based on these uh, and uh, made drawings. That was a, a marvelous bicycle. Sooner or later they will produce it that has an electric dynamo. Which uh, recharges itself, but it's not true in the sense that it's like saying it would be cool, right? Uh, these are projects which they are in a development, right? In that case, is still in their research uh, studio, if I'm not mistaken, in Ducati. The fun thing was that we did the display drawing on the walls of Triennale, and that was an incredible satisfaction to do that, scribble on Triennale's walls. It was a small exhibition. This was a project which is pretty old. Um, I brought it in to show you um, for the same purpose I was mentioning before. This uh, brand called Urmet, in reality it's Simon Urmet. It's, Urmet is from Turin and Simon is from Barcelona. And they basically did a joint venture a few years ago and they produced just a series of uh, objects, uh, not electronic, um, type like, I don't know, uh, the video doorbell or I don't know, uh, all the lighting uh, equipment, cameras, like uh, uh, or alarms. Uh, um, for hospitals, technologies of this kind applied to great public clients, very, very big, though, in terms of dimensions, in terms of contractors. Probably a brand that, in my imaginary at least, in my very my mind, uh, my mind style, well, I'd actually think they would need a graphic designer, very technical, all engineers, all from Turin, all boys, all guys, I don't know, a world that, uh, to me, I don't know, they're not so attractive, but it was very interesting, actually, because we started from designing this uh, um, trademark, which was like, a, uh, it had to be a summary, a restyling of the two existing trademarks, and they do these things, come on, please, and uh, uh, they called us, for those pictograms there, the pictograms which are, I don't know, two millimeters, maximum three, and they're laser cut, or printed with silk screening, or just dry in the sense uh, uh, they do this also on like a brow type thing, which is, well, um, First there were two or three, like there was a light, a key, and then they were 230, you know, pictograms. And each and every one of these, this is the pictogram that you had to call the Zersh? 
Uh, so, sorry, I probably need a nurse now uh, in hospitals. And uh, um, all this was built on a grid, and this grid, um, and uh, we've seen this for three years, and we've done pictograms of any kind, anything, just anything. You tell me one thing, it exists. Yes, I don't know, alarm, panic, there, we have it. And this, in reality, it's a, a fake thing that I created. I did all these drawings in the train, I'm always in the train, and with the traveling with the train, and it was any kind of drawing, any kind of activity, and then they weren't doing any kind of uh, application, and therefore, and these all ended up in all the various objects. This is a video of the dorm, room, uh, uh, and all also, all the, the, the monitors of all these, everything was designed by us. These are the colors Barbara chose. Uh, she worked in Sotsas, you can tell. And the fun thing is that they uh, fell in love with these pictograms, and they became the pictograms of the functions of their products that actually became some true tools for their communication, their institutional communication. And their where they had various different brands, La Primatic, the one that does all the gates that you see everywhere. Well, the catalog of La Primatic had the pictogram of the gate, then the general catalog, and then the one of alarms. The fun thing was um, that there wasn't, or uh, we can't really individuate in this case, like a, a boundary. Is this interface design or corporate identity? Because the corporate identity, there's many people out there that just cannot stand corporate identity, and everyone says, oh, corporate identity, oh, what a pain. But in reality, it means nothing, right? It's maybe the design of the website, sometimes it's pictograms, sometimes it's the graphics and a display. Therefore, the reason why I brought this project in to show you, well, didactically, it's very interesting. This is a book that they've never published, but this is a wall. A partition of a display um, that we've done together with the Parker Studio. It's um, in a fair for this exact sector, and where once again in these circles all the products were there, and outside all the various functions were presented by these pictograms. This is the last project that I brought to show you. They invited us, if I'm not mistaken, in Japan in an exhibition regarding paradise. The theme was paradise. Since from the invitation we received, we were the only Italian studio, we decided to do something which was referred to the Divine Comedy in Paradise, the Divine Comedy of Dante. Well, uh, this is an illustration of Dorie, but maybe I can be mistaken with this, but the representation of paradise, which is the less represented among the purgatory and inferno, well, and it's always concentric circles, in, in which in the center of all these, there's Beatrice. Well, uh, since none of us is particularly religious, actually, not even this, but we thought, what could paradise be for us? And we started photocopying, just like in the 70s, and we started cutting out all the things we like, um, you know, men, women, animals, um, anything that to us can be paradise. And we created this poster that then we printed on uh, a, um, like a pergamon um, piece of paper, and it's a manual composition that we produce uh, in series, but uh, of all these objects. The text of other pieces of paradise of Dante always in circle. Pigeon? I didn't choose the pigeon, okay. 
basta. And that's it. Mi dispiace non aver potuto parlare in inglese. Not to have spoken in English, but my English is not so fluent, so pardon me if who does not speak Italian. Okay, that's uh, uh, it. If you want to see other studios' uh, projects on the website, you can find everything. Uh, also, some very ugly things. No, I'm just joking. Uh, thank you. Uh, just one second, um, I steal the microphone. Um, can, do we have a microphone for questions? Yes, exactly, to invite all of you. Since uh, we have a bunch of time. Was I too quick, too fast? No, perfect. Um, perfect timing. Um, maybe you can ask the questions because how you can all see be beyond and behind every of these projects, we can see the approaches of your passions. I believe, and I'm saying this in, in a good way, in good terms, you have an obsessive way of looking at design. You can work on these things only if you have a true passion that actually it's a bit of an obsession. And I'm once again saying this in good terms. Uh, you're dedicating a lot of hours, a composition of this kind. Well, it's not something that uh, can be measured in uh, hours, actually. You do it like this because you really want to do it because no one asks you to do it. I find this in all of your projects. They're all very different, but I find this passion is always present there. You always add an additional value, something more. You're the exact opposite of minimalist, even if you do some very simple things. You always put this additional like present or gift, and in particular, it was not requested, and you just felt like adding this, and it gives it, which is a perfect formula to remain poor. <laughs> the entire life in terms of uh, economic wise I mean, um, the, the diagram that Barbara has done for Abitare which is before I met uh, before Busoni well if we divided that amount of money that well honestly that it's something mm. If you divide by the hours, yes, maybe we have this auto harming way of working, but uh, we self harm ourselves basically. But definitely, you do feel it. I'm just joking. Obviously, she's a she's a friend, but uh, I was saying this in a positive way. I uh, I have always appreciated of your jobs the fact that you can manage to do this. There is a microphone available for anyone who wants to ask some questions. Uh, yeah, you can speak Italian, right? Can you repeat the question? Sorry, I got lost. Do you accept interns? Well, yes, exactly. You need a pay. Yes, exactly. So obviously, uh, now we have an interner, who, which is not an interner anymore, Onofrio, uh, who has uh, studied in this school. He started doing an internship, and now he's working with us. He's part of the team. Always. The, the, the answer is yes, always. There is always an interner. Uh, it's in rotation, because I teach and the profile of the university in which I teach has uh, a, um, an entire trimester um, which is dedicated to a stage and an internship and therefore some students and rotation from UF. I teach in UF or from Isiel Gubino, but uh, they do not do any internships and therefore they're not coming from that school. 
something which is more addressed to projects. I, I do understand that you want to go work with them and uh, yes, and uh, definitely you had to show your, it looks like a bullying or studio actually, so. Um, This is exactly how not speaking in the microphone. I'm very sorry. I'm not hearing what they're saying. I'll try in Italian. How, how does it work when you guys work together? Is there like a boss? Is there like a leader and everybody has to follow? Well, it works in a different way uh, depending on the project. Well, first of all, our projects almost always are basically a result of a concept and interpretation and this is uh, like a pertinence of every project it's not always so mandatory though but uh, i want to say that this is, does not follow one language one style which is totally customizable our approach how you can notice and i have chosen these all different one from the other uh, actually correspond to an interpretation of our urge of the contractor of the Questa cosa well, uh, this thing uh, sì uh, enables uh, uh, in reality the fact that we can work all together because I believe that a concept may offer different interpretations rather uh, a, a formal response is uh, already um, a statement and a position which is definitely fixed and cannot change. For example, we uh, I don't know, uh, accept a project, average dimensions, one of the partners who speaks directly to the client, and one of the designers, or eventually two partners and two designers, obviously according to the proportions of the project and the characteristics of the various people who work in our studio. Well, we do like a first part in horizontal. What do I mean by this? We propose three hypotheses. Because to a question, to a project, you cannot give them one unique answer, because that's crazy. It would uh, be saying that we are so arrogant to say that we have perfectly guessed your objectives, and this is super stupid. Uh, we always do two or three proposals, very different one from the other, to share with the, uh, the client, especially if we have uh, um, Oh, yeah. 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 That they are intelligent people in order to follow one uh, path to follow. And very frequently, when we propose different paths, we receive uh, some questions and some responses that we didn't even imagine they could be uh, asked. And this is definitely a tool of uh, like questioning them. Uh, we're, we're questioning them as if we're. Because the client tells you some things, but in reality, when you bring in the project, conjugated in three versions, he's telling you some different things. Because once he's seen the visual, um, everything changes. And therefore, I do a hypothesis, someone else does it, uh, and some hypothesis come out uh, by common thoughts, uh, uh, and we choose the typology of the project according to the, the, the character scale in this case. Uh, well, designers who work in the studio here, well, they have some specific characteristics, right? In terms of personality, 
and uh, some are more adequate for a project rather than another. For example, regarding the inspiration, uh, where do you, where's the source of your inspiration? I know that in every work is different. How does it originate? Uh, do you, do you, well, there isn't a precise answer or something that I can actually tell you as more as a teacher is um, that the inspiration um, comes from the origin of the upstream. If I have to do a design a logo. I never look at books that represent trademark. I look at this when I don't have to do it, and then they're basically in me, embedded in me. What I'm trying to say is that the research on how to manage your creativity is something which is absolutely personal. And with time, I started understanding, for example, this is personally me, okay? This is for me. I do a project, I do I actually work a lot on it, and then I just abandon it. I abandon it, maybe two days. And then I just uh, start working this two days before the, 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 the presentation, before I have to show this to the client. And sometimes I modify things in last minute. The inspiration or um, managing creativity has no answer. I believe my partners work in a different way, and each one has his own way. It's a path that uh, teaches you to understand yourself. You have to learn it. It was very, very hard to talk in complete darkness. It's incredible, super difficult. I'm very used to speaking in darkness. It never happened to me. And, oh my God. I wanted to ask before you talked about uh, the relationship with the uh, clients and what about the youth final user? Have you ever found a method to verify the contact with the, the final user? Well, uh, actually, this does not occur upstream. Uh, I believe that uh, the depth of design is uh, like surveys, market surveys, like market research. If this is what you're asking, well, you may not ask someone if he would like to have a lamp which is a lapant too. They will tell you no, and it will never be in a brand of this. Since uh, uh, you, you do things basically for normal people like us, right? And so it's a mechanism of projection, right? You try to imagine how your project could actually give a contribution to someone. Like the pictograms of the nurse. Well, you're you're trying to do this as, as immediate as possible because obviously if someone's sick uh, obviously doing the fact that you have to draw this stupid nurse no I, I really need to understand it's a nurse and it has to be an intuition but uh, I don't think there is a scientific research and uh, I don't believe marketing is involved in all this because it's very very I, I didn't understand the question. Excuse me. For an institution, his answer though is from one to ten, it's.
it's five. Per l'editoria è sette. Per l'industria it's ten. Dopodiché, after no, that, eh, come di 10%, 10 per 10, 10 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, project for them. So how much do they really need our work? This is the reason why the advertising page is a rectangle, right? And it costs 1,000. A book of a cover page is another rectangle and it costs five. But designing a rectangle and doing the layout is the same type of work, right? But how much money can you earn from an advertising? And how much money can one earn from, I don't know, a book, which is part of a series of different volumes of books, right? A book, just a little, right, compared to an advertising. Microphone. Can you please tell her to use a microphone or else I can't translate for you? Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, uh, how does this originate? Because it's one of the. Well, you all work, how we said at the real beginning, in various different sectors, right? And we have this graphic applied to space. Um, where does this originate from? Definitely from our previous education. Barbara and in some other ways, Cristiano have all grown. Which had a part of product design, a part of communication, and a part which was architecture, like Sotsa. So when we were working in Sotsa or De Lucchi, uh, very frequently the interesting projects were exhibitions, where each of the parts of these great studios, the great departments, would uh, uh, just put their contribution. And in some way, we are pretty strong in this. Uh, and very frequently, they call us and uh, we, uh, we know how to read a plan. <laughs> now we are doing a, a project which is very, very big. I cannot bring it in because it's top secret for an airport. And therefore the sections, elevations of technical drawings and, uh, well, in Arabic. This derives from experience. I wanted to say just one small thing. Well, since you have some very different styles among the members of the studio, um, how can you understand how much this style has to emerge in the project and how much in reality is best to leave it aside? I believe that we do not have different styles. We have the a way of designing, like many different people, which is different, but uh, we uh, made this, uh, we turned this into a positive, like a, an additional value. Style to us is not an overstructure. We do not do something ever which is uh, working like this, but we want to add this other thing. No, we don't do this. Well, uh, we are I don't know, more like old style. And to us, like ornaments, if it's there, it should be a vehicle for meaning, right? It should not be the signature of our studio. Our work is interpreting with a language and a communication which is adequate for that type of story right like a horror story you do it in a way in an erotic story and you use other words right it's not that you use beautiful ugly words you choose 
out some words which are adequate. Just for example, uh, children's stories, well, you use a language which is of another kind, right? So, David Carson, uh, back in time, well, uh, it wouldn't make any sense uh, in our studio. A studio like Pentagram, which is a great studio, which is a sort of a consortium. It has a lot of different minds, all different, and this is part of its characteristic. When I'm uh, an adult, I want to be like that. Concerning old style, I thought uh, I understood that even if we've seen these on a monitor, there's always a research which is like a tactile research. Obviously, Brioni was more um, of this kind, but also this, the fact of cutting, rather the icons, which all have to have a style which is uh, 3D. I was, uh, was this my impression, or many of your projects go through like a tactile experience? No, um, well, Barbara Pates, uh, for example, I have a great passion for printing on the production, on the aspect which is physical of our work, so the, the actual printing. I, I have grown this, uh, for, uh, the nice thing of this job is that it will be a multimedia work, rather I believe that some work in these last few years, it's like monomedia. It goes through a rectangle, which is in front of the background. There is no sound, no scissors, there is no space, there is no light. Rather, it's something that in architecture is always present, right? And so at the end, what actually counts is not what turns out, but your day of uh, work. It's much funner to see how various shapes just uh, take light from different gestures. We are all, uh, also the generation, which are a bit younger compared to us, they're even more this way, my assistant. And he was one of my students, he was an assistant in university, he created a serigraphy um, lab, and um, he has a workshop working with the silk screening and their work. I believe that uh, his work is very avant-garde. Computer, honestly, also my uh, uncle or aunt uses that. Rather silk screening? No, she doesn't use it. No more questions? Okay. Well, then I want to thank Sergio for having accepted for being here. Thank you all.